Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. In this series of videos, I wanted to go through how to use chain of command on different types of objects. We'll look at classes, forms, form data sources, form controls, and tables. Uh, let's start with classes. Those are pretty much the most common objects that you might need to use chain of command, but I guess it depends on what you're doing. Okay, let's just pretend that you wanted to uh, modify and add validation on the submit button of the order recap screen on the sales order form in Microsoft Dynamics 365. So you're, you've opened the sales order form, you're using call center so you have a complete button. You'll click the complete button, it'll open a order recap screen, and once you're finished filling that out, you'll click the submit button. Well, there is validation that runs when you click that submit button to make sure that you've got everything ready before you've moved that sales order to an in-processing status. Um, that validation it will actually run in this class here, MCR and order, and there's a method validate. So let's just pretend that we want to use chain of command on this. This is just a random example, but it allows me to show you um, how to do chain of command on a class, which this is what that is. So if we right click on our um, project and we say add new item, we can create a new class. Now it's kind of our best practice to name our uh, chain of command class after our base class. And then what I've found is it can be really helpful to provide the object type next because classes and forms and tables can often be named with the same name. So if we put underscore class, that can help differentiate those, but it's, it's not necessary. But what is necessary is we must use this suffix underscore extension. I'm gonna click add that's going to create our new class. Now there's a few more things that I have to do. First, I need to copy the method definition exactly as it is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now before I do anything else. Then the next thing I need to do to let the compiler know this is a chain of command class is I need to add an attribute. And I can do that using square brackets. So I'm going to open close square brackets at the top. Then I'm going to use this global function extension of, which again is going to tell the compiler to um, basically add this code to the base code when it's, it's compiling everything together. So this is a function. It takes a string name. I could put in a string here, but again, that, um, I want to use another global function so that if the base class changes its name, I get a compiler at this time. Otherwise, if I just put in, you know, some random string here, then um, the system may allow me to compile, but um, then my chain of command would not work. So I'm going to use this function class string, and then I'm going to type in the name of my base uh, class, which is MCR and order, close parentheses, and if I've got my uh, parentheses right, then I should be good. The next thing I must have is I need to make this class final. I'm not allowed to extend this class any further than it already is. And then the last thing that I really need to do is I need to call the base Microsoft method um, within my method. I'm not allowed to not call it. So I do that using this keyword next and then I can type in the name of the method. Um, sometimes IntelliSense can get in your way here, so I'll just click off it and then select parentheses. And then I want to pass in each one of the uh, parameters that's been passed to me. So I'm going to pass in sales table, show errors, and sales order totals. And in this case, I'm going to let... Um, the I'm going to pull off these default parameters and let the base class kind of handle those default parameters. I can see that this method returns a boolean. So I'm going to declare a boolean, call it ret for return, and set it equal to this result. And then I'm going to return that result. 
I've now done everything that I need to to be set up. Um, I'm calling our base method. I've got our attribute on our class. I'm using class string global function um, to make sure I've pulled out my, uh, I'm specifying my base class function. Now I can actually add um, my additional validation um, here and maybe potentially set this ret to a different value false if it doesn't meet my additional criteria. Okay, that's it for this class exam example. I will add um, several more videos, examples of um, extending different types of objects. Thanks so much for watching.